in the next like 10 or 20 years. Tasmanian tigers are going to be walking the earth again. All right, everyone, how are you doing? Welcome along back to a brand new video. And today we've got some interesting Tasmanian tiger news. So before we chat about it, make sure to like this video if you enjoy it. Also subscribe if you're new around here and why not consider joining the Patreon as well. This year, in about two weeks time, I'm going to Australia. There's gonna be loads of behind the scenes content. So make sure you get on board with it. Anyway, now on to interesting Tasmanian tiger news. And it's sort of a bit difficult to come at you with news about an extinct animal because, well, not really a lot happens with it for obvious reasons but well today anyway something did happen and something i think that is worth talking about so you've all probably heard about the thing called cloning and that it was done once on a sheep named dolly and maybe we're going to clone some mammoths in the future and all that sort of fun stuff science has advanced that much that it's no longer science fiction we can actually start doing this we can make up weird concoctions of animals like this mammoth is going to be mammoth dna an asian elephant hybrid like it's not going to be a full mammoth but you know like a hairy elephant that's going to be pretty cool anyway yeah cloning that's what we're here talking about today now it's not just my opinions or anything like that according to the tasmanian tiger this is actual real science stuff and there have been people looking into the tasmanian tiger genetics for years now trying to piece each individual little bit together to try and make something stick and recently that actually happened. Scientists were able to sequence together the Tasmanian tiger's genome. And those same scientists have been given now a $5 million grant to try and help de-extinct the Tasmanian tiger. In an article posted by the University of Melbourne, they've stated that they're going to create a world-class facility or a lab or a research center, whatever you want to call it, for the de-extinction of certain animals and also conservation science towards animals that are still around today, marsupials mainly, thanks to that $5 million grant. Now, the grant was actually a gift from the Wilson Family Trust and Russell Wilson, who is of that said trust, heard about the Tasmanian tiger and its plight and the not very nice way that it went out of the gene pool, I suppose. And he decided, you know what? I want to be a part of this. I want to make something happen. We're going to try and do something. And I guess this is his way of doing that. He's put 5 million Australian dollars into this project to try and de-extinct the Tasmanian tiger. Which, if you're asking me, I think is really nice. Like there's someone out here with heaps of money that's going to push it towards the Tasmanian tiger, the thing we all love. And that's wicked. It's about time, you know? I just think now maybe someone should get Elon Musk on the phone and be like, all right, lad, can you sort us out some money for a research trip? We'll go try and find some, yeah. Basically, Elon, holly your boy. Give me some cash. Go search for a tiger. That would be good, wouldn't it? Anyway, the money that's being gifted is going to help create the Thylacine Integrated Genetic Restoration Research Lab or Tiger for short. It's going to be led by Professor Andrew Pask and Tiger, the research lab, is going to develop technologies in trying to help de-extinct the Tasmanian tiger. But not only that, it's also going to help provide crucial tools for the sustainable conservation of animals that are alive today as well. So like species that are threatened, they're going to try and help them. Professor Andrew Pask made these comments about what's happened. Thanks to the generous funding, we're at a turning point where we can develop the technologies to potentially bring back a species from extinction and help safeguard other marsupials on the brink of disappearing. Our research proposes nine key steps to de-extinction of the thylacine. One of the biggest breakthroughs was sequencing the thylacine genome, providing a complete blueprint on how to essentially build a thylacine. The funding will allow our lab to move forward and focus on three key areas, improving our understanding of the thylacine genome, developing techniques to use marsupial stem cells to make an embryo, and then successfully transferring the embryo into a host surrogate uterus, such as a dunar or Tasmanian devil. So that all sounds very exciting, and when it's broken down into three phases, it all sounds very viable, you know? And Professor Pask, he makes comments about the thylacine being reintroduced into Tasmania and that it'll be very likely that it's a very beneficial thing to the landscape because it hasn't really changed much since it did go extinct. He goes on to say that the ultimate goal is to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, is to de-extinct the Tasmanian tiger. But in the immediate future, they're going to apply the sciences that they can sort of come up with and try and help the animals that are around today to maybe make them not suffer the same consequences that the Tasmanian tiger did. And if you're asking me, that's a pragmatic approach to it all. And I think is a very good thing to be doing. It's very sensible. It makes sense. Put that money into helping the things now. Really good stuff. At the meantime, you can also try and do the Tasmanian tiger stuff. Wicked. Sounds great to me. Like helping the stuff that's already here should be the number one priority. So yeah, good stuff. And like, as for the Tasmanian 
Tasmanian tiger. It's all like exceptionally exciting. I can't lie. Imagine in the next like 10 or 20 years, Tasmanian tigers are going to be walking the earth again. So the next step on this project would be to create the stem cell for the Tasmanian tiger. And that could take up to 10 years. And after doing the stem cell stuff, you also need an embryo and then you need to put that into something else. And then from there, it needs to basically be birthed and then a population needs to happen before they're released back into the wild. So it could be 10, 20, maybe 30 years down the line. And there are two animals that have potentially been seen as like the surrogates for the Tasmanian tiger. And that is the Tasmanian devil or a little thing called the Dunna. But all in all, they're confident on bringing the Tasmanian tiger back. But not only that, they're confident on making a healthy, viable population as well. And I mean, that's all a bit mad sounding, isn't it? And like, I'm not a genetics person. I have zero knowledge on how any of that works. And I'm not going to pretend that I do know what I'm talking about because I don't. But it all sounds very exciting to me as this no knowledge person. Like all I'm hearing is that in 10 to 20, maybe 30 years down the line, Tasmanian Tigers could be back. And that's just like, it's pretty surreal to think about. And that's if they aren't already like still out in the wild. You never know. Anyway, that's going to be enough from me today. I just wanted to let you know that there is a big grant that's been chucked at de-extincting the Tasmanian tiger. And in our lifetime, especially my lifetime uh, and younger generations, that could be a thing. And that's really cool. I just wanted to bring you that. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you like this video. And if you're new around here, subscribe. And also consider joining the Patreon. Loads of behind the scenes content is going up there very shortly thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video i've been cookie take care